Greetings everyone and welcome to Jacksonville Zoo's award-winning African Forest. Originally opened in two phases as the Great Ape Loop, Phase 1 was completed in 1998 and included western lowland gorillas and bonobos, becoming the first time the zoo had housed either species, as well as brand new homes for pygmy marmosets and siamangs. Phase 2 was completed in 1999 and included new exhibits for chimpanzees and mandrills a second gorilla yard, and a renovation of the old Monkey Island making it a lemur habitat. The total cost of this project was around $20 million. Over the years, the Great Ape Loop changed. The pygmy marmosets were relocated when the range of the jaguar exhibit opened in 2004, and the chimpanzees left the zoo in 2007. On July 5th of 2017, the Great Ape Loop closed as the zoo took on a new renovation project at this time, this was the oldest part of the zoo. Renovations included a brand new bonobo building with two yards, as well as a canopy over top of these enclosures, allowing the bonobos to be out at night. Two yards for a mixed gorilla, mandrill, and colobus monkey habitat, as well as a brand new lemur exhibit. Overhead, a mesh trail system leads to all the exhibits which will allow the apes to walk above visitors' heads. The centerpiece of this African forest is a massive 50-foot kapok tree. This is where all the paths of the overhead trail system connect. The kapok tree acts as a timeshare for the primates, with each being allowed access at different times. Inside, keepers climb a spiral staircase where they can interact and provide enrichment through a mesh enclosed exhibit keeping the primates at a safe distance. All the exhibits were designed in such a fashion as to entice animals to stay near the front of their enclosures. Windows were set deeper into the exhibits to allow visitors more face-to-face -face time with these primates. In September of 2018, the new African forest opened to the public at a cost of $9 million and setting on about three acres of land. In 2020, Jacksonville Zoo won the Exhibit Award for Innovation with the African Forest. Currently, Jacksonville Zoo is one of only a handful of zoos in the United States to house bonobos. These great apes are found in the second largest rainforest on the planet, the Congo Basin Rainforest. They are a peaceful and very cooperative primate who have evolved to avoid fighting. Bonobos can teach us a lot these playful, kind, and intelligent great apes are our closest living relative, and they are masters of avoiding conflict. They don't kill each other. When a situation has a potential to cause conflict, territorial or competition for food, for example, most primates will have an increase in testosterone. Bonobos, however, have an increase in cortisol, which is related to stress and leads a seek in social reassurance than conflict. They resolve this tension with what we will call the bonobo handshake and leave it at that. These great apes, however, find themselves victims of the illegal bushmeat trade. Hunters kill adult bonobos for their meat, this action primarily being driven by extreme poverty, and the orphan babies are often sold as pets. Habitat loss due to logging and agriculture are also leading these great apes to the path of extinction. Here we find the shared habitat for the western lowland gorillas, colobus monkeys, and mandrills. However, signs here indicate that the latter two species are currently off exhibit. On September 28th of 2018, Kambaka gave birth to a female who would eventually be named Gandia. Kambaka was 22 years old at the time and had been found in the previous year to be deaf in both ears. After the birth of Gandia, Kambaka's maternal behavior was normal and perfect, except she was spotted carrying and cradling her newborn improperly, a behavior that may have led to the loss of her previous two infants at the zoo. When zookeepers noticed this, they intervened. For the first five months of her life, Gandia was cared for by the keepers, who bottle-fed and taught her. To give her healthy socialization during this time, they kept her near Kambaka and the rest of the troop, 
It didn't look as if Kambaka was going to properly care for her after this time, so keepers came up with two alternate plans. The second plan involved a surrogate mother at the zoo, and the third plan would be to ship Gandia to a surrogate mother at another facility. Luckily, the second plan worked as 30-year-old Bolera became a surrogate mother to the five-month-old Gandia. As soon as they were introduced, Bolera began holding the young gorilla and comforting her with soft vocal rumbles. From there, she continued to be attentive and protective over Gandia, and soon after, Gandia was reintroduced to the rest of the troop. Other gorillas we will meet will include Madini, who was born in 1996, Rumple Stills, who was born in 1994 at Cincinnati, and the leader of the troop, Silverback Lash, who was born at Cincinnati as well in 1976. At some point, Jacksonville Zoo plans on giving these gorillas access to tablets that would allow them to choose their own mills and play elementary math games. There are a few conservation efforts that Jacksonville participates with that are worth mentioning here. The Loya Bonobo Sanctuary, or Paradise for Bonobos, is a 75-acre sanctuary where bonobos are healed by a dedicated veterinarian staff and some are even cared for with love and attention by human mothers. This is the world's only bonobo sanctuary. Since 2002, the sanctuary has rescued, healed, and cared for hundreds of bonobos. The second area is the Bonobo Community Reserve, or Land of the Bonobos. Twice in recent years, rescued and healed bonobos have been released here. This 120,000 acre protected rainforest is a safe place for these great apes and many other endangered animals. To ensure their safety, the reserve is patrolled daily by a dedicated team of echo guards. GRACE, or the Gorilla Rehabilitation and Conservation Education Center, is located at the Taina Nature Reserve. Here they rehabilitate and conserve critically endangered Grower's gorillas in the rainforest of the eastern Congo. They also teach local communities on how to develop sustainable livelihoods while improving their standard of living. The Growler's Gorilla have suffered a 77% population decline in the last 20 years and are considered one of the most endangered primates in the world. Much like the bonobos, these problems include the bushmeat crisis, habitat destruction, as well as something called conflict minerals, which include Tuscan, gold, and tin. Because of the high value of these minerals, they continue to fuel and sustain armed conflicts in the region a direct threat to these gorillas. Grace Center is home to 300 gorillas, about 8% of the remaining wild population, as well as okapis and chimpanzees. Madagascar is the only place that lemurs naturally call home and is the fourth largest island in the world and is one of the most unique biodiversity hotspots. There are over a hundred different species of lemurs, and they live in a female-dominant society, which is very rare in mammals. They show signs of dominance in the way they mark their territories within the group, as well as snatch food away from the males, physical aggression, and take over sleeping spots. They play a huge role in maintaining the diversity of the forest through the movement of seeds. Many flowering plants and tree species depend highly on lemur species to disperse their seeds. Outside of humans, lemurs are the only primates that have blue eyes, which occur naturally in the blue eye black lemur. They are also one of the oldest primates. Roughly 70 million years ago, a lemur-like animal roamed alongside the dinosaurs, and roughly 65 million years ago, these animals made it to the island of Madagascar. Lemurs are also known as self-medicate. The red-fronted brown lemur will eat millipedes to get rid of gastrointestinal parasites. Recent research has begun to reveal some surprising intelligence in lemurs. Lemurs have been shown to memorize lists of images by tapping a touch screen, for example, then type them out in the correct sequence, identify the largest, and even understand basic math. Certain species have a complex way of communicating, from loud howls and barks to growls and meows, including a mixture of scents and facial expressions. 
Unfortunately, the majority, if not all, of the lemur species face the risk of extinction by mid-century. The major problem for lemurs comes down to human poverty once again, where humans are forced to squeeze the already stretched natural resources of the island, using slash and burn farming to make room for crops, or once again hunting these animals for food. Climate change is another factor. One thing we can all do is not purchase rose wood. These endangered tree species is often illegally logged to make furniture. We can reduce our own carbon footprint, support groups that save lemurs and primates like the Duke Lemur Center, Lemur Conservation Network, or Eden Reforestation Project. Executive Director Tony Vecchio had this to say for the new exhibit. The construction of the African forest was a milestone for us at Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens and a testament of how we spent more than 106 years at the very forefront of animal care and wellness, wildlife education, and conservation. Coupling of a wellness-inspired design with a multi-sensory rich environment not only enhances the guest experience, but also creates a shared understanding and passion for animal conservation. This completes our trek through the African forest. Thank you for joining me on this first look at the Jacksonville Zoo. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.